You are listening to Chesterton Radio at ChestertonRadio.com. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed. down here, Cherry. Yes? Hey, Jack, what'd you send Reggie out for? Special job that needed to be done at once. Oh. Well, hello, Cherry. Ain't you happy? No. Well, neither is your big brother Job here, so that makes two of you. Yes, I know. Well, ain't you gonna say hello to your little sister, Job? We don't need small talk. My sisters and I understand each other. That's just the trouble. We don't. We don't what? Understand each other. We all want to love you so much, Job. And you won't let us. You crazy little fool. Job, don't talk to me like that. Don't you know these men brought you down here just to hear you talk? But I haven't got anything to say they shouldn't hear. Oh, you haven't, huh? No. Did you think I did? Look, I don't know anything about it. I wish somebody'd give me a drink. Has he had anything while I was up getting cherry? Nope, not a drop. All right, pour him another jigger. Jigger? It's not even a drop of water on a hot stove. Job, I wish you wouldn't drink. Yeah. Yes. Why do you? The same reason Faye indulges herself in vulgar language. The same reason Hope's devoting her life to chauffeurs. The same reason you... What, Job? What am I? The same reason you're the way you are. But what am I? What is it I am? I want to know. I've got to know. Can't you see she's driving me nuts? Why don't you pull her off? I wish you'd answer a question, Job. What did you mean, she's the way she is? No, thank you. And have them on my neck. Them? That's right. Cherry's mysterious they. The little people. Hey, you believe they are around, too? Very much around. They are going to destroy this house before they're through. Not while we're here to prevent it. Yes, they will. Because they will have completed the job here before you realize who they are. The Martins will come to ugly and early deaths one by one. It'll seem so strange, so unnatural, utterly unsolvable. And all the time, they will be right under your nose. They... These murdering little people who've been closing in on Cherry and the rest of this household. Now, will you please give me another shot of that brandy? Jack. Jack, look at Cherry. Why does she eat? Cherry. Cherry, do you hear me? Oh. Oh, yes. I was thinking. About what? I didn't know anyone realized how dangerous they were except me. There's not a bit of blood in your face. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. But now I know why Job is drinking so much. Why is Job drinking? Well, why? Because he's as frightened as, as I am. Is that true, Job? No. Mr. Packard. Yes? Where are Faye and Hope and Grandma? Faye and Hope are locked in their bedrooms. Your grandmother's in her suite on the third floor. C- could they come down here? I suppose they could, if there's any good reason for it. Yes, there is. I'll have to know what it is first. Job has something to tell all of us. Job? Hey, what are you talking about? I promise you. I promise you he will tell something. But everybody's got to be here. You might as well save yourself the trouble. I haven't got anything to say to anybody. If he doesn't tell you, I will. I promise. She's crazy. I don't know. But I think we'll try it. Doc. Yeah? Go up and ask Grandma Martin to come down here. Then get Faye and have her help you bring Hope down. Wake Hope up if she's still asleep? Yes, yeah, she may still be a little weak. Okay. Oh, just a minute. See that she's warmly dressed. A person coming out of a heavy dose of chloroform is in danger of pneumonia. Yeah, I'll take care of her. Look here, Packard, I don't like this. You don't like what? It just happens I don't want to see my grandmother right now. Why not? That's my affair. Sorry, you'll have to stay. I haven't got anything to say, and neither is Cherry. But I have, Job. I'm not going to stay, and that's all there is to it. Job, sit down. You heard what I said. I said sit down. I punched you once tonight, and I can do it again if I have to. What are you going to sit down? You're being almighty high-handed in this house. Your grandmother gave me full authority. Now sit down and relax. Strong arm method. Yeah, that's better. Sometimes a strong arm is the only thing people understand. At least give me another drink. No. You've had enough for now. I've never had enough. I never will have enough. Enough of what? 
Well, speak up. Enough of what? Job thinks he needs a drink, Mrs. Martin. Nonsense. Everyone tries to make Job appear worse than he is. Job, dear, would you like a cup of coffee? No, I wouldn't like a cup of coffee. Oh, don't be naughty now, Job. Oh, nuts. Hello, Grandma. What's wrong with you now? Nothing. Nothing, Grandma. And I'd like to know who moved the chairs in this library. Chairs? Certainly. They're not where they belong at all. Well, I'm afraid I'm responsible for that. Indeed. Well, they go right back where they belong. Get up, Cherry. Yes, Grandma. May I help you? Do you know where they go? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid not. Well, then stand out of the way. Just as you like. <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> Did someone touch one of Grandma's precious chairs? Oh, hello, Faye. Hi, Miles. Hello, Job. How's drinking these days? Ha, <laughs> ha. Great joke. Come on, Grandma. Relax. Mind your manners, Faith Martin. <laughs> oh, those chairs of hers have been sitting in exactly the same spot in the library for 40 years. She knows where they belong to the fraction of an inch. I certainly do. There. Now, the room looks like something. Where's Doc and Hope? They're coming. Hope's feeling pretty good, so I came on down. What's happening now? Cherry and Job have an interesting surprise for us. Oh, Job's not going to confess he's responsible for the baby, is he? <laughs> Don't be vulgar, Faye. Take your own chair, Cherry. Yes, Grandma. Job, come here to your chair beside me. Look, Grandma, will you lay off me tonight? Job. All right, Grandma, anything you want. Say, what is this? What do you mean, Job's own chair? Some more of Grandma's discipline. When we were kids, we each had our own chair, and every evening we had to sit in that particular chair and listen to Grandma read to us. Kept you from running the streets. You mean all these years you've always sat in the same chair in its same position? It was the law. You must have ruled with an iron hand, Mrs. Martin. I did, and I'm proud of it. Yes, but you're not quite so proud of what you made out of this, are you? I'll thank you not to blame inherent wickedness onto me. Any bad in you children came from your mother's side of the family. You leave our mother out of this, Grandma. Hmm. You can take it our mother wasn't a Martin. And that she probably died to get out from under the thumb of Grandma. Job, you've never said an unkinder word in your life. That pays you back for your jab at our mother. Oh, you're an ungrateful boy, Job. Okay, I'm ungrateful. Yeah, everybody's in the library. Oh, here they come. They're kind of weak, you. You better sit down here. Hope, take your own chair. Hey, what you mean? Hope's in no condition to walk She can or... walk over here to her own chair. Well, I swear to Grandma. That's all right. I'm wobbly, but I'm game. Come on. Well, I don't mind telling you, Grandma. The more I see you, the more I don't like you. Keep a civil tongue in your head. There you are. Okay? Yes, I'm perfectly all right. Well, I think this is your first appearance among the living, if you call this living, since your attack of chloroform. Yes, and it's nice being alive, if you're interested. I want to ask you a question about that later. About being alive? No, about who did it. Well, I can save the interview right now by saying I was asleep when it happened. You didn't wake up while it was being given? If I did, I went right out again. And you've no idea who did it? No. Not even whether it was a man or a woman? No. Come now, what's all this about? I think you asked for our presence down here, didn't you, Mr. Packard? That's right. This is to be Cherry's show. Cherry and Job's. What's the matter? Have they been after her again? This has nothing to do with they. Yes, it does. It has everything to, to do with them. I understood either Job here was going to make a confession or that you were going to make the confession for him. What sort of nonsense is this? It's true, Grandma. It's true. Job, what are you going to confess? Nothing. Cherry's got bats in her belfry, and they've got her going in circles. Mr. Packard, you mean you brought us all down here simply on the word of this neurotic girl? I'm not neurotic. You don't say that about me. Mrs. Martin, if you'll please just let me go ahead with this in my own way. But the child's utterly irresponsible. Please. Oh. Now then, Job. Don't look at me. I haven't anything to say. Cherry? Job, why don't you tell them? Why don't you make a clean breast of the whole thing? What are you talking about? The murder of the chauffeur. Cherry Martin, are you accusing your brother, Job? Be still, Mrs. Martin. I never heard Mrs. anything. Mrs. Martin. Well, I never did. Is that what you're doing, Cherry? Accusing Job of the chauffeur's murder? Yes. Why, you little double cross? It doesn't matter, Job. It doesn't matter. You'll never be punished for it. You're crazy. I suppose I'm the one who tried to chloroform Hope here, huh? Suppose I've been pushing you downstairs and slashing you. Just a minute, Job. Cherry, what do you mean, he'll never be punished for it? Because they'll get him before the law dies. Cherry, what do you mean? It's true, Hope, it's true. Uh, are you trying to give us all the creeps? Why are you all looking at me like that? Stop looking at me like that, do you hear? So the good-natured drunk killed the chauffeur, and they are going to get him before the law does, eh? Can I help it if that's the way it is? Can I? 
Can I? Got. Yeah? Keep an eye on Job. You bet you. If you ask me, Jack. Oh, hey, oh, who turned out the light? Quiet. Listen. The baby. The baby. Now, get the light on. I gotta feel my way around. Darned if it don't sound like it's right here in this room. Hurry up. Turn on that light. Got it. All right. Everyone stay right where he is. You all right? All of you? I don't want to be vulgar, but I feel like something laid a hard-boiled egg in the pit of my stomach. The baby cried. It's a warning. It's a warning to Joe. Nonsense. I won't have it. What I want to know is how those lights were turned off. No one was within six feet of that switch. But the baby, the warning... Doc, you stand there right beside that switch from now on. Okay, fella. I'd like to see it. Oh! Oh! Job! Oh. Job! He's been shot through the head. The gun with the silencer. Yes. Oh, Joe, darling. Oh, Joe. Joe. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? They want all of us dead. <laughs> Further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. Casting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed. police have just got to be right, Jack. The, the shot that killed Job come from out on the porch. I know that. And, and Faye, Hope, and Cherry, and Grandma Martin was a-setting right in this room with us. That's right. So they couldn't have done it if they'd wanted to. Looks that way, doesn't it? It not only looks that way, it is that way. What you keep nosing around this library for? What you expect to find? The answer. Answer? Answer to what? Uh, someone in this room killed Job. You're crazy. That's so? I'll be a bow-legged hypnosis if you ain't. What? Ain't we just admitted Job was shot from out on the porch? Doc, you're sure Reggie's up patrolling the second floor hallway? Of course he is. That's what you just told him to do, ain't it? Yes. Well, then, that's where he is. Looky, it's three in the morning. How about us calling the whole thing off and going to bed? Can't. Well, if the police are satisfied he is shot from outside, why shouldn't we be? Because I know more than the police do. Okay, you know more than... Huh? You know more about what? What's going on in this house. For instance... We know that a baby cries in this house and that there's no baby. Yeah. We know that Cherry predicted Job's death not ten minutes before he was killed. You mean her saying they would get him before the law did? Yes. How did she know? Well, how about her being in cahoots with the killer on the outside? Maybe. We also know that just before Job was killed, the lights went out in the library. And the baby cried. Yes, but what made the lights go out? Well, somebody snapped the switch. But who? No one in the room was nearer than six feet to the switch. It's right beside the door. Somebody must have sneaked the door open, reached in, and snapped them off. Who? Well, the guy that shot Job from the porch. Maybe. I don't think so. Well, why don't you? Here, bring your flashlight over here and run it along the floor. What for? Would you mind, Doc? Oh, no, of course not. Thanks. Hmm. Okay. You know, fella, don't mind me saying so, but I think you're trying to make something out of nothing. You can go to bed if you want to. Oh, you know doggone well I won't go to bed until you do. Suit yourself. Why do you think somebody in this house done murder? At least you can tell me that much. It was too well set up. It was all planned. What was? The murder. Cherry insisted on bringing the whole family down here. Cherry accused Job of killing the chauffeur and predicting his death. 
Jerry was frightened from the moment we brought her into this room with Joe. Jerry's always scared. And just the same, she was breathless, expectant, waiting for something to happen. Then you, you really think she done it? On the other hand, Grandmother Martin acted very peculiar. She insisted on arranging the chairs in a certain position in the room. She insisted on each one of the family taking a certain chair. She selected the chair right in front of the window for Joe. But didn't Faye explain that she'd been doing that since they were little kids? Yet when I interviewed the family on the first night we got here, she didn't insist. Everyone sat where he wanted to. Hmm. That's funny. Yes, I think so, too. The only thing about Grandma doing it, though, everybody said Joe was her favorite. You don't just up and murder your favorite grandchild. You don't even help somebody else do it. Still, she did make him sit in the chair in front of the window. Yeah, she done that all right. But looky, Jack, just before the murder, uh, you were so sure that Faye was the one. Now, I'm still not overlooking her. She's the most intelligent, the most capable of planning a foolproof murder. And she, she was the one nearest. Hey, wait a minute. I just thought of something. Did you hear any gun go off? What's that? When Joe was shot, did you hear any gun go off? No. Well, neither did I. Just a smashing of the wind. Which means the gun with the silencer was used. Yeah. I guess that'd have to be it, wouldn't it? Hmm. Well, well what's that for? Huh? Well, what's you doing that for? Marking on the floor where each chair is placed. Just in case they're moved. There. Yeah, now then, we're ready to go upstairs. To bed? <laughs> no, not to bed. Oh, all right, all right. I was just asking. Uh, well, will you tell me one thing, though? What? Why, if you think Cherry or Grandma or Faye is a killer... Didn't you lock them up tonight? I said Reggie to patrolling in front of their rooms, didn't I? Yeah, but this afternoon you had them all locked in and had me and Reggie watching besides. Now you have their doors unlocked and you only have Reggie on the job. I've been waiting for something to happen. Huh? You've been doing what? Waiting for something to happen. You mean that's what we've been doing in yonder in the library? Waiting for something? Yes. Well, I thought you said you was hunting for something. Well, I had to put in the time some way. But what? Waiting for what? For the murderer to make the next move. For the... You mean you're turning the murderer loose to prowl in the house? That's about it. Well, just to see what he'd do next? Yes. Then well, why'd you bother to put Reggie up on the second floor? So we could get to all the rooms fast in case the baby cried. And no baby ain't cried. No. So you're giving up expecting something to happen? Maybe. I'll take it easy on the stairs. Yeah. Hey, that that kind of makes my hair stand up, fella. Right this minute, a killer may be a-sneaking and a-crouching around in dark places. Hey, 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 hold it. What's the matter? There's somebody standing there at the head of the stairs. What? Oh, what's the matter with you, Doc? That's Reggie. Well, what's he in the shadow for? Is that you, Jack? Yes, Reggie. Everything quiet up here? Too belly quiet, if you ask me. Haven't heard anything, huh? Mm, there's been movement in Faye's room. I don't think that young woman's getting much sleep tonight. A bad conscience, maybe, huh? That's all you've heard? Funny thing. Once I thought I heard a rustling of a dress. When was that? Oh, 15, 20 minutes ago. What did it sound like? Just movement. Like a drape blowing at an open window. Must have been hearing things known in the hall. If any of the doors had been open and closed, I'd have heard them. You couldn't have seen around the corner of the hall? No, but it's been so quiet, I would have heard the turn of the door now. Maybe. Maybe not. Let's have a look. But I tell you, Jack, there's no time for guesswork. We make sure. Uh, this is Faye's room. Yeah, give me a flashlight. Uh-huh. Wait here. I thought you said Faye was awake. She was. Half an hour ago. She all right, Jack? Yes, her bed looks like it had been stirred up with a spoon, but she's asleep now. Pope's right around the corner of the hall. All right. I don't see how anyone can sleep tonight. Her brother murdered. Exhaustion. I suppose so. This is it. Wait here. Funny, they didn't lock their doors from inside. But I was on duty up here. Well, just the same with somebody prowling. Oh, uh, Hope okay? Yes. Doesn't look like she'd moved since she got into that bed. Doc, you keep watch down here while Reggie and I go up on the third floor and have a look at Grandma and Cherry. Sure, go ahead. Come on, Reggie. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Oh, hello, Faye. Did somebody just come into my room? Yeah, Jack, uh, just checking up. Well, he's got his nerve. For your own good. I'll bet I was something to look at. Didn't he ever hear the old saw, that sleeping girl's lie? I guess not. Where is he now? Oh, up on the third floor, checking on Grandma and Cherry. Oh, <laughs> Grandma's gonna love that. Oh, business is business. <laughs> Grandma keeps a poker beside her bed. For his own good, he'd better not wake her up. Grandma's asleep? Yes. She snores. <laughs> now then, across the hall is Cherry. Listen. The baby. Quick, look in Cherry's room. Right, oh. Turn on the light. I'm trying to. Here it is. 
fuck's sake. She's not here. Cherry's not here. Downstairs, quick. Get down. Wait. What's that? Get by the door. Look. Handkerchief. Blood on it. Oh, I say. Come on, don't stand there. Jack. Jack. Wait a minute. Look here. We haven't got time for anything. But right, right here by the head of the stairs. A shoe. What's that? Here, let me see it. A girl's shoe. Cherry's. Come on, keep your eyes open. Here go. Yeah. Here's something else. I say, a ribbon out of her hair. Jack, Jack, the baby. Did you hear the baby? Yeah, we heard it. And Cherry's not in her room. Cherry, you, you mean the baby's got her? Don't be a fool. Doc, you stay here and guard these doors. Reggie and I have got a job on our hands. Well, where are you going? Search the house. She seems to have been dropping things all along the way. I say, what's this? Stocking. Oh, looks like a strip tease here. I'm downstairs to the first floor. Uh-oh. There's something at the foot of the stairs. Another shoe. What's that in the hallway? Get it. I say, I don't see it. Toward the back of the house. The baby again. Hurry. Hurry. She must have gone this way. All right. What'd you pick up that time? I don't know, but it's it's feminine, Lisa and perfume. Well, hang on to it. Now, this goes into the kitchen. Come on. Now, look around. I say, here it is. A bit of lace. Looks like it was his off address. Right in front of this door. Joe. Dark. Must be the cellar. Find a light. All right. Here it is. Come on. Here, this way. Check, I say, the furnace. It's going full blast. I can see it. But the furnace, full blast, at three in the morning? Look. Look there, Reggie. It's Cherry. Cherry lying in front of the furnace. Here, let me see. Bound hand and foot. And gagged. She's unconscious. But, Jack, the furnace. Do you think they were going to do it? Do you? transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. Casting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed. So at last you've seen one of them, these people you call they. Yes, but not his face. No, 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 don't try to sit up. Uh, I'm thirsty. Get a glass of water, Doc. Water coming right up. Just lie still and keep covered up. Where am I? Don't you recognize your own bedroom? Oh, oh, yes. You're sure you do? Yes, it's my bedroom. I always hated it. Why? Because when I was little... Grandma punished me by locking me in here. I was afraid. Why? There were pictures on the wall. Pictures of Humpty Dumpty and Simple Simon and Peter Piper and a lot more. You mean the wall was papered with Mother Goose characters? Yes. And they wouldn't stop looking at me. Even when I shut my eyes, they were still there looking at me, laughing, laughing. That was when you were a very little girl? Yes. Here you are, Jack. Couldn't find a glass. All right. No, let me raise you up. All right. There. Go ahead. Thank you. Better? Yes. Now then, you say you didn't see him. That is, his face. No. They, their 
very clever. Was his face covered? No. It just wasn't there. Wasn't there? He had a kind of hood over his head. It was all kind of blank and dark inside the hood. Doggone. Describe what you did see. Oh, do I have to? Please. Well, the hood... And then kind of a short smock, you know, big and full. I think it was made of satin. What color was it? Red. Red, like when you stick your finger and the blood comes out. Hey, Cherry, are you telling the truth? Yes, I am. I am. And what about his trousers? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember whether he had legs or not. You don't remember whether he had legs or not? No. And yet he picked you up and carried you down to the furnace room, so he must have had legs. Yeah, I guess he must. How did he get here in your bedroom in the first place? He, he... He just opened the door and walked in. Well, why didn't you scream? I was too scared. And then he put a gag in my mouth. Didn't you fight him? Oh, I couldn't move. You just laid there and let him... Let him gag you and hog tie you? Yes, I couldn't move. And all the time, Reggie, Reggie was out there patrolling the hall. Well, how come he didn't see you when old No-Face picked you up and carried you out? I don't know. He kept my face pressed against his chest hard, so I couldn't see a thing. I thought I was going to smother. And then he carried you down to the furnace room. Yes. And then he turned on the furnace full blast. Yes. Why? What do you think he intended to do? Oh, I know what he was going to do. Well, then why didn't he do it? Because just then the baby began to cry. Yes, the baby. Yes, the baby cried, and, and that's the last I saw of him. You didn't see which way he went? No. He was there, and, and then he was gone. And the next you knew, we were beside you. Yes. Well, son, it looks like we got to set our traps for a feller in a red smock and no face. Yes. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Where, where's Grandma and the girls? Down the library. Reggie's staying with them. Why? Reasons of my own. You... You haven't done a very good job here, have you? Well, what do you mean? Since you came, the chauffeur was killed. And now Job is dead. That's right. And then this happened to me. You'd rather have someone else? No. You couldn't help it. Nobody could. You think this reign of terror is going to continue? It's got to. It can't stop now. It's got to go on and on and on until there isn't any of us left. Nobody but Grandma. You mean you think you and Hope and Faye's going to be killed? Yes, I know. You say you know. Do you actually, or is it just your belief? It's the same thing. I haven't been wrong about anything I said was going to happen. That's right, Jack. She kept saying over and over that Job was in a bad spot. And Hope. She's in the worst danger right now. Oh, what about Faye? I don't care about Faye. She doesn't like me. And I don't like her. But she's going to die, too. Yes, but I don't care about that. Job was the one who bothered me most. And next to Job, you like Hope the most? Yes. Cherry... Do you know a girl named Pauline West? Pauline West? Yes. Do you? Why do you ask that? Just answer. Do you or don't you? Oh, I guess I've heard the name somewhere. Sounds familiar. She's a radio actress. Now, do you recognize her? I... No, I don't think so. What the heck's a radio actress named Pauline West got to do with this, Jack? I don't know, but I found several casting sheets down in the furnace room made out in her name. He found what? Casting sheets. What's a casting sheet? It's a form sent out to actors and artists who've been cast on a show. It tells the time of rehearsal, the date and hour of the show, and the amount of money the performance pays. Okay, so you found a casting sheet for Pauline West, and I still want to know what that's got to do with all the rough stuff that's going on here. Probably nothing. Simply a new name in the picture. If there's a Pauline West connected with his house, I want to know it. Well, wouldn't Cherry know it if there was? Seems likely. But I'd still like to know what that casting sheet was doing in the furnace room. Must not be a very good actress. I never heard of her before. Oh. You listen to radio shows? Of course I do. Well, anyway, all of them, it's got girls on them. What you think I just bought a battery set to carry around with me for? (laughs) In love with all the women on the air. And boy, is there a couple of them that I'd like to write dialogue for. Would I? You're darn right. The words I'd put in those babies' mouths would make the radio sensors turn over in their graves. What do you know about radio sensors? Nothing. Then what are you talking about? Okay. Hey. Hey, Jack, look. Cherry. Cherry, you little fool, come back here. What's the matter with you? Where do you think you're going? No place. Now come back here and get into bed. Pull the covers back down. Yeah. There. Now get into that bed. All right. I wasn't going anywhere. And what do you mean, trying to sneak out on us? No, I wasn't. I 
just don't like this room. Well, would you like us to move you downstairs? Jack. Jack, where are you? Hey, that's Reggie. Up in Cherry's room, Reggie. Something's happened. I knew it. Jack. Jack, Hope's got away. Hope's got away. Clive, she snapped off the light in the library downstairs and was out the door and gone before I could get it back on. Probably on her way down to an employment agency to get herself a new chauffeur. Now, never mind that, Doc. Where are Faye and her grandmother? I locked them in the powder room just off the hall while I came up to tell you. Are they all right there? Well, they can't get out. Good. Doc. Yeah? You stay here with Cherry. I'm going with Reggie. Okay. Don't let her out of your sight for a minute. You hear that, Cherry, honey? Come on, Reggie. Do you think Hope left the house? No, I think she went towards the furnace. Furnace room? Did he say furnace room? That's what he said. That Hope was heading for the furnace room. But she mustn't. She mustn't. Why not? Because that's where things happen to people. Things happen to folks in the furnace yes, room? Yes, go tell them. Go tell them quick. Hey, you mean that? Yes. Don't you understand? Go tell them to keep Hope away from there. Well, I don't know. Jack said to stay here with you. Oh, hurry, hurry. You promise to stay right there in bed? Yes, yes. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll leave the door open. No. 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 Hurry, hurry. Poor little Hope. Poor little sister Hope. Better hurry. Hurry. Okay, Cherry, get back into bed. Oh, no. Now, come on. Get back into bed where you belong. But you didn't go. You didn't go. No, but just waited outside the door to see what was, uh, why you were so anxious for me to leave. But I was just going to help find Hope. Well, Jack and Reggie's pretty good at that sort of thing. Yes, but, but, but I know. I think I know where she is. Well, if she's in this house, they'll find her. But she's in such danger. They've got to hurry. Now, look, you, Cherry. How could you know that? But I do. I do. Hey, shut up. What's the matter? There's somebody out in the hall. Oh, no. Listen. It's them. They've come back. Maybe. But it is. I know it. I hope so. I ain't never seen a fellow with no face and a red oh, smile. Could I get under the bed, please? You stay right where you are. Listen. They're right beside the door. I can feel them. Somebody out there, okay? Have you got a gun? No. Oh, please. Let me get under the bed. No. Where are you going? I'm going to sneak over the door. Maybe I can jump. Oh, no. That's what they're waiting for. Lay still and keep quiet. Hmm. That's funny. What's the matter? Wasn't nobody out there at all. Yes, there was. I know there was. Not when I got there. I know what's the matter. You're giving me the jumps. You got me seeing things that ain't there, too. I tell you, there was Hello, some... Hello, oh, oh, that's right. Hello, Texas. Well, hey, Hope, everybody in this house is looking for you. Now, that's silly. What'd you dodge out of the library for? I had to see Cherry, my little sister, Cherry. Oh, I'm so glad you came. I was so scared for you. Sisterly devotion, huh? Yes. I love you so. <laughs> she loves me so. Now, isn't that sweet? Oh, Hope, don't say that. You and Job, you two are all in the world I've got to love. And now you haven't got Job. But I've still got you. No, you haven't. Oh, oh, please. No, you haven't got me. Not any of me. Then then why are you coming over here to the bed? Go away if you don't love me. I want to show you something. What? What do you mean? Look what I found. The gun. The gun. That's right. The gun that killed Joe. Hey, what'd you say? Give it to me. Jerry, stop. Let go of it. Hey, hey, don't do that. Give it to me. Give it to me. You bet I won't give it to you. (laughs) You shot her. He shot home. Oh. Poor little sister home. My poor little sister. Further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed.
But Jack, not only is there a policeman outside Hope's door, but there's a doctor and a nurse inside with her. Well, what's the need of Reggie, a gardener, too? Right. Hope's got a fighting chance to stay alive. The doctor says with an even break, she'll pull through. I'm going to see she gets that break. I don't get you, Mr. Packard. Yes, please explain yourself. Does it mean you're protecting her from something? You bet I'm protecting her from something, Mrs. Randolph Martin. But that's absurd. Hope was accidentally shot when she and Cherry were wrestling for the gun. Maybe. No, maybe about it. You have the word of your own companion, Mr. Long, here, who saw it. Yeah, there ain't no getting away from that, Jack. I saw it all right. I wish I'd seen it. Why? Look, Doc, I want you to tell your story again, in front of Grandma Martin and Faye here. Go over it again, every detail. Well, when Reggie come running upstairs and said Hope had escaped from the library and was loose in the house, you told me to stay right with Cherry, not leave her for a minute. Yes. Then you and Reggie run downstairs. Well, the minute you was out of sight, Cherry started in saying... Don't let Hope go to the furnace room. Don't let Hope go to the furnace room. Kept saying it over and over. And then she says, hurry, hurry, go tell him. You must warn him. What did you do? Well, she sounded so scared. I thought maybe that I ought to tell you. And I started out the door. And just as I got out in the hall, I remembered you saying, don't leave Cherry under any circumstances. So I whirled around and tiptoed back to the door. And there was Cherry out of bed and putting on some slippers in her bathrobe. I grabbed her and stuck her back in bed. Where was the terrified mouse going? Well, she said she was going to find Hope that... She thought that she knew where she was. Then what happened? Well, then the bedroom door was uh, was open, and I thought I heard somebody out in the hall. Cherry said it was them, that they had come back. Well, I sneaked over to the door and looked out, and nobody was there. Hmm. Some more of Cherry's romantic nonsense. Yeah, well, I hardly got back in the room when Hope comes in. Now, this is the part I'm especially interested in. Be very sure about every detail. Where were you standing? At the foot of Cherry's bed. What was Cherry doing? Well, the minute she saw Hope come in the door, she sat up in bed. And Hope, where was she? Well, she come in the door and walked about halfway between the door and the bed at first. All right, now go on. Well, yeah, well, Hope just walked in and said, Hello, Cherry. Well, I was looking at Hope, but Cherry made kind of a funny little gurgling noise in her throat, and I looked at her, and she was kind of green around the gills and trembling. Cherry, afraid of Hope? What are you talking about? Well, that's the way it was, Faye. I'm just telling you what I saw. Horse feathers. Well, I'm only telling you what I saw. Go on. What then? Well, I said, hey, Hope, everybody's looking for you. Why'd you dodge out of the library? She said, on account I got to see Cherry, my little sister Cherry. Just how did she say it? I can tell you how she said it. She was making fun of Cherry. Was that it, Doc? Well, yeah, kind of, all right. Cherry was a-shivering all the time. But she said, oh, I'm so glad you came. I was so scared for you. Then she said, I love you so, Job and you. <laughs> the mouse always was sloppy with her emotions. Yeah, it kind of made the hair stand up on my neck. Her saying sweet things in a kind of pleading voice and all the time trembling so she could hardly talk. What was Hope's reaction? Well, she said, and, and now you ain't got Job. And Cherry said, but I still got you. And Hope said, no, you haven't. Not any of me. And then she started toward the bed. Well, uh, Cherry kind of cringed down and said, said, go away if you don't love me. But Hope kept it coming until she got right up to the bed. What were you doing all this time? Well, just standing there at the foot of the bed. That's great. But, Jack. Forget it. Go on. Well, when she got right up to the bed, she pulled out Job's gun with a silencer on it. And the next thing I knew that they, they was fighting, fighting over like a couple of cats. And before I could get around the bed, it went off. And Hope sort of stood up, stood up on her tiptoes, and, and then just crumbled up, all in a heap. You said before that Hope said it was the gun that killed Job? Yeah, that's right, she did. You're sure she didn't say where she got the gun? No, just that she found it. Mr. Long. Yeah, Grandma? Was it your impression that Hope intended to shoot Cherry with that gun? Well, she was sure enough going to do something with it. But she didn't say anything about shooting Cherry? Well, no, not exactly, just... Just look what I've got. Then maybe she actually just intended to show the gun to Cherry. Cherry got excited and thought she was going to shoot and made a grab for the gun. Well, maybe. Doc, you believe Hope came up here with the planned purpose of killing Cherry? Well, doggone it, Jack. She was all steamed up for something. You could see hate all over her face. You'd have thought Cherry was a worm the way she stepped on her. And, 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 and when that gun come out of her dress, there was no fool in the back. I don't believe it. Well, let's see now. If Hope did intend to kill Cherry... Could she also be responsible for the other deaths? Well, she was the last one to see the chauffeur alive. That we know about. And she was sitting in the library right next to Job when he was shot. Nonsense. Not such nonsense as you might think, Grandma. I say nonsense. Well, if that's the way you feel. It's exactly the way I feel. None of my granddaughters is a murderer. Nor are they connected with murderers. The chauffeur and Job were killed by men outside this house. Hope was accidentally shot. That's all there is to it. To try to read anything more into it is unjust and unfair to the name of Martin. Grandmother Martin, you know better than that. I know nothing of the kind. The police will eventually find the killers of Job and the chauffeur. 
The doctor gives hope a good chance for recovery. That's the end of it. You believe that, Faye? Why not? What Grandma says goes. You're not interested in where Hope found the gun with a silencer? You're not interested in who bound and gagged Cherry and carried it out to the furnace room? You don't want to know what makes the baby cry when it's... Here. Huh? What's the matter, Jack? Doc, did the baby cry before Hope was shot? Hey. It didn't? No. Not a peep out of him. You, you don't suppose he's losing his grip, do you? Well, there you are. That proves the shooting of Hope was an accident. It does? Certainly. You said yourself the baby always cried as a warning when one of the family was in danger. Yes, and certainly Hope was in danger, whether accidentally or by plan. Why didn't the baby cry? Because it happened too fast. But if our psychic baby can anticipate a planned attack, why couldn't it anticipate an accident just as easily? Well, I guess I don't know. I'll tell you why. It didn't dare cry. But why not? Never mind why not. But that's the answer. It didn't dare cry. Well, ain't you going to say any more than that? No, if you don't get the answer from that, I'm not going to tell you. Mr. Packard... You mean you know more than you're telling us? I know a great deal more. I know who the murderer is. I know where I can put my finger on the baby when I want it. I know who killed Job and how it was done. I know who they are. Those they people Cherry so frightened of. And she has a right to be frightened. I'd rather be where Job and the chauffeur are right now than to have them after me. Mr. Packard, you're talking like a madman. I'm sorry. Yeah, fella, what's eating on you? So you know who the murderer is. That's right, Faye. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Very interesting. Faye, I asked Cherry this question. I'm asking you. Do you know a radio actress by the name of Pauline West? What's that? Oh, you do. Pauline West? What has she got to do with this? If you know Pauline West, then you certainly know Yes, that. yes, of course. Why didn't I think of it before? What's this nonsense about Pauline West? You never heard of her? An actress on the radio? What would I know about a radio actress? Well, Faye, apparently you're the one person in the house who knows her. Well, what of it? I called the broadcasting company where she had done most of her work and asked them where she lived. They gave me this address. That's preposterous. I don't think so. Down in the furnace room earlier tonight, I found casting sheets. You found what? A printed form from the broadcasting studio giving the day and hour of her broadcast and how much money she was to get. How much? Well, it wouldn't buy any fur coats. Then we may assume she's not a star. No, run-of-the-mill actress. Well, young man, there's no actress in this house, run-of-the-mill or any other kind. Faye. Yes? Remember the night the chauffeur was killed? You told me you'd been down in the furnace room burning some letters. Yes. It wasn't casting sheets you were burning, was it? Oh, really? <laughs> Are you asking me to break right down here and confess all my sins? <laughs> I'm just asking you if you were down there burning casting sheets and that some of them were dropped unnoticed by you. No, I wasn't burning Pauline West's casting sheets. But looky, Jack, this don't make sense. If there's a girl named Pauline West in this house, why ain't we seen her? You want to answer that, Frank? No. Do you? Not just yet. I didn't think so. But I will tell you one thing. You're one person who isn't going to get out of our sight for one second from now until this case is cleaned up. Dangerous? Very dangerous. Are you saying my granddaughter Faye is dangerous? Faye understands what I mean. Sure. Doc. Yeah? Faye's your one and only responsibility from now on. I don't care where she goes, what she does, or what happens. You don't leave her. Not under any circumstances. Get it? Got it. <laughs> Hello, Shadow. Lady, me and you is the same as handcuffed together, beginning now. Well, so you don't forget it. Mr. Packard, I've changed my mind. You've changed your mind about what? I've decided that your services in this house are no longer needed. You what? I say I don't want you here any longer. Well, that's too bad. It's not too bad. It's the end. Get your things and get out. Hey, looky, Grandma. You heard me. Get out, at once. You mean now, just as the case is on the point of being solved, you want us to leave? Yes. You want this murderer free to roam this house? You want your granddaughters left unprotected to face sure death? Is that what you want? I want you to get out. Very well. Hey, Jack. Shut up, Doc. Very well, I'll turn over my information to the police and we'll get our things. Wait. Well? There's a check for $10,000 waiting for you at my attorney's office. Hot dog. On the understanding that the moment you pick it up, all three of you leave Hollywood and disappear for a year. After I've turned my information over to the police. No. You talk to no one. That's out. For $10,000? Absolutely out. You know as well as I do that I have information in this house that the police would never find out. You know that every granddaughter in your house could be killed, and except for what I know, it would remain a baffling mystery to the end of time. Yes, I know that. Well, that information is not to be bought. Not at any price. Then if I was the murderer, do you know what I would do? It might be interesting to know. If I was the murderer, Mr. Packard, I would see that you, of all people, never left this house alive. Hey, Grandma. Yes, I'm quite certain that is exactly what I would do. <laughs>
further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed. one thing, Jack. We're sure are we not the innocent members of the family. All that's left in the house is Grandma, Cherry, and Faye here. Don't forget them. Cherry's precious they people. Yes, and Pauline West. Uh, yes, we mustn't forget Pauline West. Well, if they are in the house, and this Pauline West is here, they've certainly keep in the background. Way in the background. On the other hand, they're right up in the foreground. Well, I ain't seen them. That's because you don't know where to look. And then perhaps you'll show Doc and me. Not yet. Yeah, and, and what about the baby? Yes, the baby's very much with us, too. Y- you've seen him, too, I yes. suppose. I say you have. But, Jack, if, if, if you know... Not yet, Reggie. But, Jack... Reggie, don't you know Jack well enough by this time to, to know he ain't gonna tell us nothing until he gets darn good and ready? Right. But would you mind telling us why you suddenly decided to have Hope removed to a hospital? And why you've given Grandma Martin Cherry free run of the house while you're keeping Faye here practically a prisoner? Yeah, how about that, Jack? Hope went to the hospital to get her out of the way. Out of the way of what? She couldn't possibly stay alive in this house. She knew too much. How could you know that? She's unconscious. She was conscious just long enough for me to ask her one question. What was that? Where she found the gun with the silencer that killed Job. She told you? Yes. That's the thing that made somebody want to kill her? Yes. Well, then doesn't that put you in the same danger she was in? Exactly. Jack... You're in danger of being killed. Well, with proper precautions. But look, you tell us where you found the gun, too. Then there'll be so many of us that know... I don't want that. You don't want what? Look, I know who the murderer is. I know how Job's murder was done, but I haven't got a scrap of proof. I could tell my story from now on. Nobody'd believe me. The baby... The baby would be proof. Yes, I could bring the baby to light, but a crying baby doesn't prove murder. Well, so what? So I've got to catch the murderer in the act. But how does you being in danger? We know he wants to kill me. We know he's going to try to kill me. When he tries, it's up to me to be the smartest. <laughs> you haven't been the smartest so far. That's true. Jack, you're setting a trap for the killer and using yourself as bait? Yes. I don't like that. I don't like it a bloody bit. And Doc? Yeah? The outcome's going to depend a great deal on you. Hey, you mean your life? I mean, if you let Faye here give you the slip for one minute, I can't predict what will happen. Faye, huh? Faye. Oh, my goodness, but you look ferocious, Doc. Look, you Faye, <laughs> I ain't never hit a woman in my life. But you just you try one move, and, lady, I'm going to lay you so flat that you could be shoved under the carpet. No rough stuff, Doc. <laughs> well, I ain't fooling, sister. What a pal. Now then, Doc and Reggie, I want you to listen closely to what I'm going to say. In case I'm not as smart as the killer when the time comes. Hey, cut it out, will you, guy? Will you listen? In case anything happens to me, I want you to give this information to the police. First, find Pauline West, the radio actress. She's in this house. Second, remember that it was Grandma Martin who arranged the chairs in the library so that Job sat in front of the window the night he was killed. But be sure to tell them that she had been arranging the chairs in just that same order ever since the grandchildren were small. You got that? That's great. I'm, I'm making notes. Third... Tell them the night Cherry was bound and gagged and taken down to the furnace room that her clothes were strewn from the third floor to the basement, making a trail that would assure us finding her quickly. I say, I never thought of that. Did you ask Cherry? Did she drop stuff as as, as she was being carried down? How could she? She was tied hand and foot before she was taken out of her bedroom, according to her own story. Then the fellow who carried her down must have dropped the stuff. Right. But why? That's all the police need to know. They can find out the rest from that. Uh Uh-huh. You know, from the look on Faye's map, I bet she could tell us. Maybe I could. Fourth... There's about three or four thicknesses of wallpaper on the walls of Cherry's bedroom. Did you know for many, uh, for sure, how many, Faye? Well, I'd say offhand the room had been papered uh, four times. Yes. 
Well, tell the police to peel off the three top layers of paper in an area about three feet square and examine the figures on the paper very carefully. Well, what the heck's that for? And you be present when they do it and you'll see. Joe, sure, that's the queerest yet. Fine. Give them this gun. It's the one that killed Job and the one Cherry and Hope fought over when Hope was shot. Be sure to call their attention to this piece of black thread tied to the trigger. Yeah, I noticed that. It is on the gun when I picked it up after Hope was shot. Yes, about a foot long. If they'll examine the end under a microscope, they'll probably find it looks as though it had been burned off. You, uh, getting all this down, Reggie? <laughs> it's quiet. Six. Uh, this is going to be in the nature of a demonstration. Take hold of Faye's arm, Doc. Say, what's the idea? Jack says to take your arm, so I'm a taking your arm. Well, take it easy, will you? I don't want to look like I've been manhandled by a gorilla. Be sure to hang on to it, huh? You bet you. Hey! Uh, the lights! The lights! Jack, who turned out the lights? I did. Sit still. I'll turn them on again. Sit down, Faye. No. no, you let go of me. I said sit down. Let go of me now. Oh, why, you little cat, Let sit down. Go. Get them lights turned on, Jack. Here they are. Oh. oh, I say. Doc, what happened? Look, looky, looky at my face. Scratches. She did that. I say she done it. She tried to get away. Faye, what's the matter with you? Why'd you try to get away? Why not? It was dark. Lady, you don't know how near you come to getting soft. So what? But the lights, what made them go out? I turned them out. How could you? You were six or eight feet from the wall. The same way they were turned out last night before Job was killed. Look, I've got a piece of heavy black thread. Thread? That's all. I tied it to the switch when you weren't noticing. When I was ready for the blackout, I pulled on the thread, pulling the switch down. Lights go out, the thread slips off the switch, and... Then somebody right in this room uh, snapped off the lights. That's right. Faye, Faye, is that why you made such a fuss? Because Jack found out how you switched off the light? Oh, don't be absurd. Jack didn't say I did it. Well, what about it, Jack? Did she? I can't prove anyone did it yet. But demonstrate it to the police if I'm not here. Right, that, that, that's five things to tell the police. And that's all. Now then, Reggie. Yes? I want to talk to Grandmother Martin and Cherry separately. Go find them. Mm, have you any idea? No, what... but they're around the house someplace. Well, how do you know that? We ain't kept a watch on them for hours. How do you know they ain't slipped out? Because the house is completely surrounded by plainclothes detectives. What? What's that? That's right, Faye. What's that for? Because of hope. Whoever wants her dead might otherwise have slipped away and followed her to the hospital. I see. Think of everything, don't you? We do our best. There's murder loose in this house. We're doing what we can to keep it here, under quarantine. Well, go on, Reggie. Find Grandma and Cherry. Mm, I know. I'll have a look. Oh, Reggie. Yes? One at a time. Bring Cherry first. Cherry it is. We, uh, we're just going to sit here and wait. I am. You can do as you choose. I choose to go up to my room. Go ahead. Hey, Jack. You go too, naturally. But uh, leaving you down here alone, fella. You stick to Faye. Don't worry about me. Well, come on, Shadow. Yeah. Yeah, only I still don't like it. <laughs> You've certainly got a lot of faith in your partner. What do you mean? Two girls and one old woman, and you're worrying about leaving him alone here in the library. Well, so I'm afraid... To... And all the time he'll be within calling distance of you and Reggie. And the house surrounded by cops. That's what I call real bravery. Don't make us all look ridiculous, Doc. Go along with that. <laughs> well, I got a feeling... Oh, come on, if you're going to. Yeah. Okay, let's go. You better lock the door if we go out, Jack. I don't quite know where you are. You may be right here in the room with me. You may be watching from some panel I don't know about or at one of the windows or doors. I don't know. All I know is that you've been listening to everything that's been said in this room. I knew you were there. That's why I sent Reggie out to find Grandma and Cherry. That's why I let Faye go up to her room with Doc so we'd be alone. You may be the murderer. I don't know. But whether you are or not, you're a very unhealthy person. You're afraid. You feed on darkness. Your thoughts are lustful and violent. You're the power of evil in this house. You're not only cowardly and violent and evil, but you're much worse because you're a woman. When a woman's bad, she can be so much more wicked than a man. Strange, isn't it, that anything which can be the greatest instrument for good in the world can also be the greatest instrument for wickedness. I feel sorry for you. It wasn't your fault in the beginning. I think of all the people in this house, you have the greatest potentialities for greatness. You could have been just as great in the realm of goodness as you are superior in the realm of evil. You've worked with such perfect deliberation, coolly, masterfully, with superior knowledge of human nature. You've even used your own weakness to the best advantage. It's been fascinating working against you. And in a way, it seems a pity that you're at the end of your rope. I don't know when that end will come. That'll depend on you. An hour, day, not much more than that. And I want to tell you that Jack. I... Jack, look at me. Doc... Doc, where's Faye? I, I don't know. What's the matter with you? I was hit over the head. Hit over the head. Doc. Doc. Hit over the head. The baby. Reggie! Reggie! 
Reggie, it's the baby. Find Faye. We've got to find Faye. <laughs> Further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed. Hit on the head. Fine Faye. Hit on the head? Who did it? Doc? Doc, answer me. Who did it? I don't know. Be all right in a minute. Fine Faye. Fine Faye? Why? Why? What's, what's, what's the matter with Faye? Jack's scared. Fine Faye. You sure you'll be all right? Yes, sure, sure. The baby. The baby. Doc, I've got to go find Jack. Jack? Jack? Jack, where are you? Reggie. Reggie, where are you? I'm in the living room, Jack. In the living room. Stay right there. I'm coming. Something is loose in this house. Something dangerous. I can feel it. Oh, oh, Jack, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Up and down in the furnace room. Have you seen Faye? No, but the baby. Yes, I heard it. We've got to find. Jack, Jack. Out the hall, quick. Who is it? Who fell downstairs? Grandma, Grandma Martin. Oh my, say, is she dead? No, unconscious. Jack, Jack, look at her leg. Yeah, broken. Oh, that's too bad. An old lady like her. Jack, Reggie, Jack, what was it? Hey. Hey, what's the matter with Grandma? Thrown downstairs. Unconscious and broken leg. You mean Faye done that to her own grandma? We haven't got time to talk. Doc, how do you feel? Oh, better than it did. Can you carry Grandma into the library? I guess so. Then take care of her. Don't leave her for a minute. But I want to go with... You're not in any condition to go anywhere. Do what I tell you. Come on, Reggie. Where are we going, Jack? Search every room on the second and third floor. We're looking for Faye? I'll search the rooms. You stand here in the hall. See that no one slips by. That's Faye's room. Yes, I know it. But what about Cherry, Jack? We find Faye. Cherry will be all right. Um, did you look in the second closet? Yeah, no one in there. And across the hall to Job's room. We're uh, wasting time. I know it. What else can we do? Watch the hall. Well, why not call in some police from outside? No, I'll do it myself. I know it's done right. Yeah, nobody in here. Come on, Hope's room's next. Around the corner of the hall. If Faye threw her grandmother downstairs, she's got to be up here somewhere. Well, if she's not in here, she's got to be on the third floor. Uh, don't forget to look in that window seat. Don't watch me. Keep your eye on the hall. You expect her to try to slip by? I expect someone to try to slip by. We're closing in. Mm, looking for anyone in this house is a ballet job. Nobody in here. Come on up to the third floor. Right oh. They've got to be... Wait, hold it a minute. What's the matter? Here's the linen closet. Don't let's pass up anything. <gasps> no. No, go away. It's Cherry. Oh. Cherry, what are you doing in this linen closet? Crouched on the floor like a ballet animal. Cherry, answer me. What are you doing here? She's after me. She's after me. What are you talking about? Who's after you? Faye, she mustn't. She mustn't. Faye's after you? What for? She, she wants to kill me. Well, where is she now? I don't know. Here, get up on your feet. Oh, uh, uh, look here. Go easy, Cherry. Now then, answer me. Where's Faye? I, I don't know. Answer me, do you hear? Tell me where Faye is or I'll shake it out of you. Oh, I don't want to see her. I don't hear I don't. Oh, Jack, this is beastly. Don't you think I know it? Well, she's so terrified now she doesn't know what she's saying. You can't get anything out of her like that. No. No, I guess you're right. Oh, Jack, look at her hands. Fingers straight out, stiff like claws. I can't bend them. Something's happened to them. Here, let me see. Oh, like ugly claws. Cold as ice. I can't bend them. Look. I can't bend them. 
my own fingers. I can't. <laughs> Shut up. I can't. I can't bear this. It's very It'll wear off when the tension's over. <laughs> Cherry, do you feel safe here in this closet? Yes. Yes, it's dark. They can't find me in the dark. All right. Go back in. I'll lock you in. Jack. We can't take her with us. We've got to find Faith. But she shouldn't be left alone. I tell you, we've got to find Faith. Well, I'll be all right. We'll come back for you in a little while. I don't like it, Jack. I don't like any of it. I hate women who get themselves into messes like this. Now, come on. They certainly aren't the best. Come on up the third floor. Cherry with her fingers spread out, stiff like clawing talons. Grandma sprawled grotesquely at the foot of the stairs. I wonder how we'll find Faye. Yeah, that's pleasant. I say we're not rushing about as we were. Isn't it as important to find Faye as it was? Just as important, but not as urgent now that we know where Grandma and Cherry are. I see. And she's got to be up here ahead of us somewhere, huh? Yes. All right, now for Cherry's room. I'm to wait out here? Yeah. You don't suppose... Jack. Jack. Come here. What's the matter? Look. Around the corner of the hall there, shadow, creeping this way. That's a man. Right behind him is throwing a shadow ahead. There haven't been any men in the house? Well, there is now. You want to take him or shall I? Let me. He's almost to the corner, so get set. Right out. Move fast. He may have a gun. Quite. Hold it. Get him, Reggie. <laughs> look out for his gun. <laughs> there. Good work, Reggie. Here, let's have a look at him. Here's his gun. Do you suppose this is the chap who carried Cherry down to the furnace room? Hello. Reggie, we made a mistake. What's that? Hey, look at this badge on his vest. Badge? Yes, yeah, police department. Oh, but I say. Plain clothes man from the detective bureau. You've had the doubtful honor of knocking out a policeman. Yes, but w- w- what's he doing here? Naturally, I wouldn't have tackled him well, That's I... what I want to know. What's he doing here? I wonder if they've planted any more in this house. Mm, but I thought you said they weren't going to. They weren't. I said they'd keep all their men out. What's that? I don't hear anything. I do. From Grandmother Martin's suite of rooms. Come on. Here. Here, this is it. Here, this way. Jack, what's that smell? Chloroform. Here. Here, she's locked in this closet. Faye. Faye, do you hear me? Get me out of here. Hurry. Get me out of here. Listen, get hold of yourself. Save your breath. We'll get you out. But how? The door is locked and there's no key. We'll break it in. Right, oh, but can we do it? Wait. Faye. Faye, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, hurry. Lie down on the floor. We're going to break in the door. Do you hear? Yes. All right. Well, come on, Reggie. Together now. <coughs> Solid. Once more now. He's coming. Do it again. No. That did it. Here, help me with it. Get me out. Get me out. Easy, easy. All right, you're all right. There you are. Now throw open the window. Quiet. Now get all those saturated towels and throw them out. Out the window? Yes. Don't try to talk for a minute. Just breathe deep. What? Why would she do it? Don't talk. Don't talk. Just breathe. Half a dozen towels soaked with chloroform enough to kill an elephant. Out they go. I, I, I can talk. Let me sit up, please. Take it easy. The fresh air is all I needed. Who locked you in that closet? Grandma. Grandmother Martin tried to kill you? Well, how did she get you in the closet in the first place? Yeah. You remember Doc was bringing me upstairs? Yes. Somebody hit him on the head. I, I didn't see who it was. I... I just ran. I was so scared. You didn't do it? No. I, I ran up here to Grandma's room. She she wasn't here, but she came in in just a minute. Well, where'd she been? I didn't get a chance to ask her. She, she was out of breath. She said, Qu- quick, Faye, get my slippers out of the closet. I didn't think. I just went in the closet, and she slammed the door on me and locked me in. Uh, and the chloroform towels were already in there? Oh, no. no. She said, you'll be safe in there, my girl. Then I heard the door to her room open and close, and I pounded on the door to be let out, and in a couple of minutes she came back in. What did she say then? Nothing. I think she didn't didn't say a thing, but pretty soon she began pushing towels soaked in chloroform under the door. Joe, Grandma Martin. I was all wrong. I thought I knew who the murderer was. I I thought I knew from the way you talked, Jack, but I was wrong. It was Grandma all the time. Grandma Martin, I thought it was you. You thought it was me? Yes, we found Cherry hiding from you. I say, are you sure it wasn't you? It was Grandma, I tell you. But Cherry said you were trying to kill her. Cherry? Cherry said I was trying to kill her. That's what she said. And see here, you might have locked yourself in there with those towels, you know. But I didn't. I didn't. Jack, I, I thought you said you knew for sure who the murderer is. I do, Faye. I know just as sure as I'm sitting here looking at you. <laughs>
further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. On Christmas Eve, the star of Bethlehem shines bright as a symbol of mankind's efforts to make the world a better one in which to live, despite ravages of war and hunger and disease. So from the writer and producer of this series, Carlton E. Morse, a further message about the plight of children overseas. These millions of unfortunate youngsters have never known what the star of Bethlehem symbolizes. They have never known a Christmas. Who are they, Mr. Thorson? They are four-year-old Christian Ocel of France, 14-year-old Panyoto Gavril of Greece, 14-year-old Shai Quichen of China, 7-year-old Claude Grandjean of Belgium. They are legion wherever war has struck, those children who have never known Christmas. Why don't you do right now what many in your community have already done? Gather discarded toys and children's clothing, pack them with care, tie them securely. Address them to Foster Parents' Plan for War Children, 530-47th Avenue, Long Island City, New York. That's Foster Parents' Plan for War Children, 530-47th Avenue, Long Island City, New York. Do it now. Your Christmas will be happier in the knowledge of what you have done and that you too can be a Santa Claus. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed. as I'm standing here. Grandma tried to kill me. Would you go on the witness stand and swear to that, Faye? Certainly not. This is a family affair. Nevertheless, it's true. You're mistaken, Faye. I'm not. Yes, you are. Because at the time you say Grandma was shoving towels saturated with chloroform under the door of the closet you were locked in, she was lying unconscious at the foot of the stairs on the first floor. No, I tell you... That's right, Faye. I was there when she fell. I'll grant you, your grandmother may have locked you in the closet, but she wasn't the one who tried to chloroform you. Then who did? She was the only one who knew I was in there. No, the murderer knew. But how? How could he possibly have known? Have you forgotten you pounded on the door and yelled to get out? It drew the killer's attention to you. What a perfect setup. Your grandmother locks you in, so naturally if you die there, everyone would suspect your grandmother. Then... Then that's why he wouldn't answer. He wanted me to think it was Grandma. Certainly. The killer was roaming around the house. Grandma Martin locked you in the closet to protect you and started downstairs to find me. She was thrown or pushed down the stairs by the killer who then came on up to the third floor. Here you were, yelling and pounding. Saw the perfect opportunity to finish you, and nearly succeeded. Dr. Jack, what about Cherry down on the second floor? When we found her crouching in the linen closet, she was in a fit of terror. She said Faye was after her, trying to kill her. She was mistaken. You mean she mistook the killer for Faye? But but in that case, who is the killer? You don't know now. No, I, I don't. Oh, look here. There's only one person. It could be Pauline West, the radio actress. Yes. Pauline West. Yes, it would have to be. She's the only other person connected with this house, the only other name mentioned. Yes, Reggie. Pauline West is the murderer. But where is she now? Why haven't we seen her? I- is she in the house now? Yes. And you're going to see her very shortly now. In fact, in the next few minutes, I'm going to turn Pauline West over to the police. No. No, you can't do that. No matter what happens, you can't do that. She's guilty of murder. She killed your brother, Joe. She was responsible for Cherry accidentally shooting Hope, although it wasn't an accident. She tried to kill your grandmother by pushing her downstairs. She tried to chloroform you. And she was responsible for Cherry being pushed downstairs and being slashed over and over again. I know, I know it. Oh, don't you understand? We'd all rather be dead. We'd all want to be dead if she was taken into court and and, and made a public exhibit. Something for the newspapers to gloat over, for the appetites of the scandalmongers to feed on. I'd rather see all of us dead than to see that happen. I'm afraid I haven't got much choice in the matter. I warned your grandmother when she brought us in that if the murder was in this house and I could prove it, nothing could prevent me from turning it over to, to the police. Then if I get the opportunity, I will kill her with my own hands. Oh, but you mustn't. That would be terribly foolish. Because then you would have to be the public sensation instead of her. No. Because you'd never take me alive. Reggie. Mm-hmm. Under these circumstances, Faye's a very dangerous young woman. 
It's going to be necessary for you to stay by her and prevent her from doing what she said she'll do. Well, how much longer is this going to keep up? Only a few minutes. Only until I have Pauline West in safe custody. No. No, you can't do it. Reggie, stop her. Jack. Jack, she's locked us in. Now, now we are in a fine mess. We've got to break down that door. Right, all. Let's go. Wait, listen. The baby. Oh, look here. Come on, we got to get out of here. Together, now. <laughs> Once more should do it. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> more solid than I thought. We've got to keep trying. We've got to get out of here. It's murder. We've got to get out of here quick. Cherry. Cherry, is that you? Hey. Hey, don't come near me. Cherry, listen. We haven't got much time. Give me your hand. Now, come on. No, no, Pete. I tell you, we haven't got much time. Now, hurry faster. Hey, where are we going? I don't want to go. Now, then, up, up these stairs to the attic. The attic? Faster. Faster. Wait. But why, Faye? Why? Come on. Now then, up this ladder to the roof. Faye, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Come on, come on, hurry. I'm right behind you. Oh, please, Faye, please. Now push that trap door up. No, no. Push that trap door up. <gasps> All right. Up on the roof. It's so high up here. It's so high. It's all right, Cherry. It's all right. I'm going with you. Go- going with me? Here, come over to the edge of the roof. I want to show you something. Hey, someone's turned the searchlight on. They can see us up here. It doesn't matter, darling. It doesn't matter in the least. Hey, I'm so scared. Don't worry. I'll be with you. I'll be with you all the time. Now, look. Look over the edge. You see the glass roof of the sunroom right down below us? But, but it's so far. The glass roof of the sunroom. You loved the sunroom when you were a little girl. It was your favorite room. Hey, hey why did you bring me up here? Well, darling, you couldn't help it. It wasn't ever your fault, so you mustn't suffer anymore for it. Just close your eyes. Do you remember how Do you remember how you used to close your eyes when I told you fairy stories? Fairy stories about the good little fairies who always came to the rescue of little girls. And I think we're getting it. Once more, we'll do it. That did it. That did it. Downstairs, Reggie. Downstairs. I know. I'm coming. Which way, Jack? Which way? Come on, come on. Downstairs to the first floor. How do you know which way she went? I don't know which way she went. We've got to find her. Wait. I'm going into the library. You take the dining room. Conservatory and the sunroom. Right, oh. Yell if you see anything. All right. You do the same. Fine mess. Hey, Jack, what's the matter? Doc, has Faye been in here? Faye? No, nobody's been in here. Jack, we ought to get a doctor. Jack! Jack! Come here! Come here! That's Reggie. Come on, Doc. He's found her. Jack! Jack! Coming, Reggie. In the sunroom! In the sunroom! Hurry! Hurry! Did you find her? Reggie. Reggie, where is she? What's the matter? Look. Look, Jack. Up through the glass. Look up on the roof. What's that? Hey. Hey, it's Faye and Cherry. It's Faye and Cherry. Look, they're fighting. Well, don't stand there. What's the matter with you? Get up on the roof. Look out! Look out! No. No, it shouldn't have happened that way. Oh, boy, four o'clock in the morning. Reggie, when this mess is cleaned up, I'm going to bed and sleep straight through a week. I'd a little sleep I'd get if I did go to bed tonight. wonder why they don't put some sleeping chairs in a hospital waiting room. Where'd Jack say he is going? The doctor called him out. Something about Faye. Yeah. Chauffeur dead, Job dead, Cherry dead. Poor little old Cherry. That isn't all. Huh? Hope in the hospital with a bullet wound, Grandma here with a broken leg, and Faye here with a fractured skull. Man, when when Cherry and, and Faye high-dived off that roof and down through that skylight... Would you mind not talking about it? Yeah. Sure would like to know who was pushing who up there, though. Cherry was pushing Faye. Yeah, it sure looked like it, all right. Oh, uh, you, you back, Jack? Yes. Anything? No, everything's just the same. Looky, Jack... I don't... Uh, I still don't know who is doing what to who over yonder at the Martin. Well, it's time I told you. Yes, I think it is. You said Pauline West was the killer. She was. But what I didn't say was that Pauline West was... Well, who? Cherry Martin. Hey, you mean Cherry done all that dirty work? Yes. But the slashing thrown downstairs. She did that herself. She did? And them, the, the, the they people she was always talking about. Figments of her own imagination. She really believed in them some of the time. Huh? Hey, the th- things don't fit together. Yes, they do. Let's start at the beginning. Way back when Cherry was a little girl. She was a nervous, excitable child. Her grandmother had little patience with her. She used to lock her in her bedroom. On the walls of the bedroom were all the old Mother Goose figures. The man in the moon, the old witch. And one of the characters was a figure with a black hood, the face shadowed from view. 
and he wore a blood-red smock. The man who tied her up and carried her to the furnace room. Hey! Yes, the characters from her childhood wallpaper transferred from the walls to her mind. Those were the they people who were after her. Locked in the room with these figures she feared and hated, her child mind absorbed them to the point where she could never get rid of them. Oh, how horrible. But no Mother Goose character carried her downstairs. No, of course not. She did that herself. But somehow in her mind, she blamed him for it. But she was bound and gagged. She did that herself. Was this why Grandmother Martin called us in on the case on account of Cherry? No. Hope and Job were involved with the chauffeur. He was trying to make Job ask his grandmother for money to pay blackmail. When Job refused, he found Hope an easy target, so he threatened to bring the family name to shame through Hope unless Job got the money. Grandma knew this? No. Only that Job and Hope were in trouble. Which we were supposed to get him out of. Yes, but the night we arrived, Job took things into his own hands and killed the chauffeur. Job really did do that then? Yes, Cherry actually saw him. And that's what set Cherry off. She was shocked and afraid, but she saw how easily people could be killed. She was right on the verge mentally anyway. That finished. She killed Job? Yes. She was impelled to kill Job because she knew he was going to be found out. But how? Well, she watched where Job hid the gun and got it. She took it out on the porch to that big urn that sits right in front of the library window. She fastened it in place, pointing right to the chair Job would sit in. I say, she knew he'd sit in it because Grandma Martin always made each one sit in his own chair? Yes. Then she fastened a heavy black thread to the trigger, ran it over the muzzle of the gun, and threw a crack in the window to her chair. So that's how it is done. Yes. When the gun went off, the bullet cut the thread that was holding it in place, and it fell into the urn out of sight. I say. Only a mind in that condition would have conceived such a thing. But it worked, and it made Cherry look innocent. And then Hope found the gun. Yes, before Cherry could get it and hide it. Hope suspected Cherry because she had said they would get Joe before the police did. So she came up to Cherry's room while you were with her, Doc. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The minute Cherry saw the gun, she knew that she had to do something desperate. But Hope knew too much. So she pretended to struggle with her, but deliberately turned the gun on Hope and shot her. Boy, murder. And me, you're standing right there. Then I discovered Pauline West. And when I mentioned the name to Faye, then Faye knew that Cherry was guilty. Well, I don't get that. Why? Because Faye that knew that two or three years ago, Cherry had tried to be a radio actress. To keep the rest of the family from knowing, Cherry had taken the name of Pauline West. She wasn't a good actress, but they discovered she could cry like a baby. What's that? Exactly. Cherry was the baby. She'd done baby imitations on the radio. Doggone. Faye had forgotten all about that. It happened so long ago, but the minute I mentioned Pauline West, she knew at once. So now she had to kill Faye to keep a secret. Yes, that's why I insisted Faye be guarded so closely. Well, who bought me on the head when I was taking Faye upstairs? Cherry. She wanted you out of the way so she could get at Faye. But Faye didn't wait. She ran up to her grandmother's room. By this time, Grandma knew. She knew Faye was in danger, so she locked her in the closet so Cherry couldn't get at her. But Cherry did get at her at chloroform. Yes. It was also Cherry who tried to chloroform Hope. Boy, and such a pretty little thing. But why push her grandmother downstairs? By this time, Cherry was so unsettled in her mind, she didn't know what she was doing. But that, that roof business, uh, how'd Cherry ever get Faye up on the roof? And what happened up there is best left alone. You ain't a-talking? Case is finished. The house of Martin has fallen. They, those little people, have succeeded just as Job said they would. Now let's forget it. I'm dead tired. Right. Yeah. Poor little feather. Further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. <laughs>